Let's make sure we're all muted.
perspective. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Allison Starr, and I am the Cliff Gallery Director, Mountain View, Dallas College. We are really excited to welcome you to this artist panel with some of our Dallas College alumni. So, as we all know, our day to day lives are extraordinarily challenging, especially right now. For us who received an art education, are currently in an art program, or are considering one, we know there are unique obstacles in the art field. Yet, no matter how we get there, we persevere as artists. Some of us teach art, we sell our work, we take on art-related jobs to pay for what we need. We are resilient, creative, hardworking, and I think really good problem solvers. The artist alumni you will hear from today attest to this. Tonight you'll be from a group of alumni artists who I do believe will inspire, motivate, and give us a bit of insight into the way artists navigate their lives. For those of you, please make sure you use the chat function to make comments, to give shout outs, and ask questions. We will try to get to all of them as we are able. So there are many people to thank real quick. Larissa Ortiz and Sylvia Wise of Alumni and Donor Relations at Mountain View in Brookhaven, Davila Suela, Cliff Gatt, Assistant, the Mountain View Art Department, and Dallas College IT Department. This definitely could not have happened without each one of you. And of course, thank you so very much to everyone on the panel and for all of you attending. So, this evening's guest moderator and interviewer is Angie Cook. With over 25 years of experience in higher education and the arts, Angie is currently a full-time English faculty member at Dallas College's Mountain View campus, where she actually began her education journey as a student. While living in West Texas, she learned the art of darkroom photography, taking those skills into her job as a museum educator and in group and solo exhibitions. When she's not grading essays, Angie shares the life and culture of her hometown of Dallas with her daughter, Lucy. So now for our alumni artist, here is just a little bit about each one of them. Patricia Rodriguez professional artist based in Dallas, Texas. Her work has been awarded and published in several prominent publications. She has been the artist for Pantone, Lexus, South by Southwest, Capital One Bank, House of Blues, Red Bull, Nation Star Mortgage, and she is currently working on a new body of work for 2020. Dallas-based artist and assistant professor at the Texas at Arlington, Carlos Don Juan's work has been featured in 16 solo exhibitions and 121 group exhibitions in museums and galleries worldwide since earning his MFA in 2009. He is the project manager of Dallas Art Collective Sour Grapes. His work explores societal constructs and perceptions of illegal immigration taking on the pejorative term alien and playfully appropriates its meaning with figures cloaked in colorful shapes and patterns. Francisco Josue Alvarado Araujo has been involved in the local art scene with interest in finding opportunities to expand the meaning of the world. In 2020, he received his MFA in from Texas Christian University and in 2015, a BFA in from the University of North Texas. He is based in North Texas, where he has a backyard household studio he shares with fellow artists. He has recently exhibited at Blind Alley Projects in Fort Worth and a recipient of the New Normal, the artist response to COVID-19 grant. Javier Ruiz Navarro was born and raised in the beautiful country of Costa Rica. He grew up interested in art, 
Yet, when he moved to Texas for college, he discovered his passion for design and digital media. He graduated from North Lake College in 2017, and he's currently a senior at the University of North Texas, double majoring in communication design and photography. So, before I hand the platform over to Angie and the artist, please remember to engage with us by using the chat function. We love to hear from you. Okay, enough of me. So now for what you've really been waiting for, the conversation. Welcome Angie and artists. Thank you, Allison. Artists, I'm so glad you're here. Um, we have students, both art majors and not art majors from high school all the way up to your traditional college, um, what you think of as traditional students ready to to hear the wisdom that you impart about your your leap from college into your careers before i i ask questions of all of you at once um i'd like to ask some individualized questions um just so we have a sense of who you are individually as artists and patricia i would like to start with you um what advice can you offer young artists who are wanting to venture into combining various media, which you've done with your lollipop shop and with your Mary Kay mural. What advice can you offer them? Uh, be very open-minded. Um, something might not sound like it's up your alley, but I would investigate things that you feel connected to and um, research and stay in tune with that because that could provide networking opportunities. Um, the Lollipop Shop was a DJ event and uh, that gave me a chance to interact with the public, which as an artist is very important. Um, you know, like doing things like this, webinars, speaking to the public, going to art shows and speaking to your public is very important um, to be, for them to be able to connect with you. Um, and the Mary Kay mural was a mixed media we used makeup to do a um, Guinness World Record giant mural, and that was really exciting, but you wouldn't think, you know, makeup. So it's just keeping an open mind. Um, you just really never know what you're going to experience in the art world, and it's, it, it's exciting, and you want to just embrace that open mind. That's what I have to impart to you. <laughs> That's great. Um, I like it because that's something I think that any student going into any field can carry with them, but not not, you know, being open to everything and, and making sure to network work and not be close to anything. Good. Yeah, definitely. All right. So, Francisco, um, what advice do you have for students who are making the transition from community college into a university? or um, even graduate level art program? Is there anything you can tell them to make that transition smooth? Um, what I would say is to be involved and be present in the community. Um, I know that I didn't do that, um, but I regretted it. That was the first thing that I, I told myself, oh, I wish I could have gone into that society, into that club. Um, it really helps to talk to people um, and it'll help, um, yeah, just open up friendships and networking. Um, yeah, so get, use all of the resources. Good. Was there anything in particular, like, was there one university class, graduate program class that you just, <laughs> you didn't think you do and you didn't think you'd be able to get through, but you did? Uh, I would say sculpture. <laughs> Um, I was, uh, it was, it, it, you had to sort of break down your walls into what you thought art was, at least in my experience, and that sort of changed and rocked my world, but it completely changed what I thought I could do. So I guess, yeah, the main thing that I do now. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, Javier, um, I, you, you work in, in technology are you really excited to discover and use right now? Like what can young artists walk away from Googling and, and trying to get their hands on? What are you excited about? 
<laughs> well, me personally, I have been recently dabbing into animation, which it doesn't necessarily follow under design, but now that I've been exploring more into it, um, I've been realizing how much I can use animation into my practice and into the work that I do. So uh, right now, that's what I'm mostly excited about. And uh, it's it's a nice reminder that uh, touching other, getting your hand into other fields might be a good, uh, just good idea to, to start doing. Because you never know, uh, kind of like what Patricia was saying, you never know when you're going to need that or uh, how that's going to be helpful in your practice. Good. Um, what about or or did anything about animation sort of m make you nervous or like really excited you because you were able to use, um, you know, different different arenas than than typical? Yeah, I think both at the same time. I was really nervous about just doing it because I'd never done it before. I took a class last semester and that's how I got introduced to it. Uh, but once that sort of fe initial fear was, uh, I, I got passed through it, uh, it's really exciting for me to now be able to have all that set of skills to be able to combine it. And, you know, there are things that I'd seen on the internet, oh, I wish I could do that. And now I can. So that's the exciting part, I think. Good. All right. OK, so Carlos, um, what message do you hope that your young viewers and by young, I mean, youth, not, you know, not not little kids. But what message do you hope that they take away from your artwork? Um. Well, a, a lot of my work deals with personal experiences in my life, um, being born in Mexico and then coming to the U.S. when I was three years old at a very young age. Um, I've experienced a lot of things that were difficult in life. And so my work revolves about around the idea of making a positive out of a negative. Um, and I hope that, you know, when viewers see my work, they can connect with maybe past experiences that they've had in their lives and make a, a positive out of it. I also hope that the work creates some sense of empathy as well and, and creates a dialogue between my work and the viewers and where they can start to think about the situations that other people experience in this country because um, due to the political climate that we're in now, you know, it's been very interesting in, in how we're dealing with issues in society. So I just hope that people can stop and think and process, you know, what's going on in, in, in their lives and in their neighborhoods and in their communities and hope hopefully it helps them process that a little bit better uh, with more hope and with with more of a, of a positive outlook. You think of has there been any one. Out of somebody who said, you know, when I saw this piece, I saw things differently or I recognized myself in it. Well, you know, I, I think one thing that I've always experienced is when I have exhibitions, whether it's in galleries or in museums, it never fails that I meet a, a guest or a visitor or someone that comes to the show that's never been to a gallery or has never been to a museum. And they always tell me, you know, I didn't know that I could come to events like this. I didn't know that there was work that related to my experiences. And so to me, it's really exciting to start to create um, these opportunities for the community to experience art in a place that they didn't think it was for them, because I think sometimes they feel excluded. Um, and so I hope that I can build on the community and, and, and hope that people can understand that they're, they're not excluded from this art thing or this art scene. Um, and I, I hope that I can keep pushing that dialogue for the youth, for the kids, for the elder people, everybody. To know that you know this is for all of us. It's not just for a chosen few. That's great. I love that, and I love it because we're doing a little bit of that here tonight. Um, it is not just for the chosen few. You all you have to do is log in and and part of this community. So good. Okay, so I want to ask um, some questions of 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 all of you as artists. Um, First one, and Patricia, I'm going to have you answer first, if you don't mind. 
how did you make your way or how are you still making your way as an artist? Um, and can you illustrate, can you provide one particular story as to how you carved your path? Um, I originally quit my job 10 years ago. It was a dead end job where I was doing no art at all. And my, my literal soul hurt, you know? And so I knew that wasn't my calling that I needed to be connecting with the world through my art. And, um, shortly after I quit, my dad passed away. And so it was just like big shock to my world. And that, but that also reinforced that I, life is short and you only have so much time to make your mark here and, you know, express yourself. So for me, that was like the catalyst. And um, so really, it's just been trial and error, no lie. Like, <laughs> I mean, I had a goal, which was to create art, but I didn't have, I didn't set a path. So I would really like to advise, you know, the students out there to make a path a goal, write it down. Um, when you see it on paper, it's like, it's a magic thing. You've just made it real. You know, you see, it's like a, a finish line to get to. It's a goal. So I, I really, and I think goals are very important. Um, creating a financial budget, stuff like that. Um, but for me, it was, I was apprenticing in there in different studios. I was just real like, hey, I can do it. Even if I couldn't, I, you know, that fake it till you make it thing is real. <laughs> so, um, you know, I got to try different things. I was like digital art, sculpture, plaster trees, uh, makeup murals. I mean, just crazy stuff until until it's your skill. And then you have a whole like toolbox of skills to pull from. And um, so right now I'm doing like some artisan work, like gold leafing and gilding and like restoring art. And then on the side, I do my painting gallery shows and sales. And, uh, but it's really just, for me, it was just being as versatile as possible, learning all the things. I mean, we have YouTube and the internet now, so there's like really no reason why you can't learn something. I mean, there's just take can't and no out of your vocabulary. I love that. That's, that's a good bumper sticker. Take can't and no out. Okay, so, <laughs> so Francisco, um, how did you make your way? How did you, you know, how did you carve your path in, in the art world? And if, is there anything specific that, that comes to mind? Um, I don't know if I carved it or not. I just sort of fell into it a little bit. I just went to school, you know, and then I took advice from people that I thought were um, wise and um, uh, there's a lot of gray areas and sort of you just have to take some chances and just go with it. And I did and um, you sort of, or at least I sort of learned how to live in that gray area. So, and uh, be comfortable with a little bit of uncertainty and yeah, if surprises come up, um, Good surprises, weird surprises, um, and yeah, sort of just go with it. So, yeah. Okay, I love it. <laughs> Javier, what about you and your your journey? Um, you know, your how did you make your way? How did you decide this is what you want to do? Um, and how are you carving your way in the art? <laughs> well, I think that I'm uh, I'm you know I'm still a student, so I don't know if I have done it quite yet, but um, I, I think that I'm actually going to be taking notes from Patricia and Francisco and Carlos on what they say. <laughs> but uh, I thought I would share um, a sort of, so right now I do work as a uh, graphic design, uh, graphic designer at uh, UNT on campus. Um, it's a part-time job that I do uh, as, you know, on, on the side from, uh, side from school. And um, I thought I would share briefly how I got there. Uh, it's a little bit of an in, maybe embarrassing story, but I, I think it exemplifies this. So I, when I transferred to UNT, I heard about Design Works, which is the name of the studio that I work at. And they, uh, at one day, I decided I'm just gonna walk and walk in there and ask if they are hiring. And so I knew that that was the place that I wanted to be uh, specifically. So 
um, I that's what I did, and uh, I asked for the manager or the you know the person in charge, and um, I wanted to speak with them, and she was really welcoming and charming, and walked me into her office, and uh, I shared and expressed my interest and in how much I wanted to work for them. Um, I had he heard and seen their work, and it was uh, really good quality. So um, she was really nice, but she said, you know, we're not hiring right now. So she took my information and said, well, I'll, I'll contact you uh, or send you an email if we have an opening soon. A few months passed, and I didn't heard anything from her. So I decided I was going to go back again and uh, just check in. And so that's what I did. And same situation she was really nice but she said we're still we're not hiring right now and so i waited a few more more months this was sort of in the span of uh maybe like a year a little bit less and finally eventually i got an email from her and said we have an opening now so i interviewed for them and um, i got the job so i guess my point is uh just to seek opportunities and to just be persistent and strategic maybe you know even though uh, now looking at back at it, I was like, you know, this is so embarrassing. Why did I do that? Why were they, you know, what would, were they thinking about me? But now we talk about it and they just, uh, I guess, admire my persistence and how much I wanted to work with them. So. Yeah, that's great. Um, that persistence, that, that, that taking a chance um, on yourself. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, Carlos, so same thing, same question for you. How did you make your way in the art world? How how did you or how are you still, even at this point in your life, um, carving your way? Well, I, I feel like I'm, I'm still just getting started, even though I've accomplished uh, some goals that I'm very proud of. But what, what I did as a young artist and as a student in community college and in the university, I started to research artists that I was at, that I, I admired and that I looked up to, and I started to try to understand what it is that they did to get to where they were. And a lot of them had their BFA, their bachelor's, a lot of them had their master's degree. Um, and I started to think, well, maybe I need to follow in some of these steps in, in order for me to be competitive or to be considered in the same kind of conversation with some of these artists. And so I did that. And, you know, over the years I made more work and I, I finished school and eventually, you know, I started being invited to show with some of these artists that I consider my heroes. And so it's been really interesting. So I just kind of have to look at what's going on and how do I compete? And then um, I also, you know, I, I work with a group of artists with my collective, the Sour Grapes, and that was unique to me. And it's, it's not that difficult is that I found a group of artists to work with and to um, be inspired by. And I think that was really helpful for me because I think being an artist can be a very lonely uh, practice. And so being able to have a group that was just as creative and just as inspiring really helped me carve my way into a more commercial outlet of art making. So my group, we create graphic design, murals, um, advertising, you name it, for, for small nonprofits up to big corporate companies. And we did that as a group. And so it, I'm glad that I'm able to work as a team with an art, with the team of artists, but I'm also able to work as a solo artist on my personal work. And so I would encourage people to try to find like-minded people to help inspire them, uh, because this journey can be a difficult one. It can be a lonely one. Uh, but if you have a good team around you, I think you can accomplish things and with more ease. That's great. A great balance between sort of the introvertedness of, of solo art making and the collective extrovertedness that you have to have in order to produce those, those group works. That's excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna ask everybody a, a, another question. Some of you have already alluded to this, um, but what was the most difficult obstacle you encountered in your pursuit of an art career? Um, and how did you overcome that obstacle? What was it and how did you overcome it? So Francisco, I'm gonna start with you. Okay, um, so one of the more difficult things that I encountered was uh, sort of trying to uh, find a path and uh, trying to find a school, uh, trying to find 
the program um, money, I guess, was the main one. And uh, so, yeah, so I visited a couple in the area and uh, I knew my options were limited. And uh, last minute, I sort of just decided, it's like, let's do this. And I did. I applied to TCU and real quick what what do you mean by my options were limited like as far as distance or just financially uh, both yeah i'm and they're sort of tied together right like so um i didn't see myself uh being able to go outside of the state at least when i was working at, at, at the time and yeah so i was i was sort of forced to look um uh, inside in the state and I have, and then sort of narrow that down to which ones are are offering uh, full tuition, and so I had to narrow that down. And I was able to be in contact with some of the um, programs through my teachers, um, and so they sort of just told me, "Look that way. Maybe you can talk to this person." Um, and yeah, and just visited the schools and try to make connections that way. Yeah, but it, it worked out. Um, but that was definitely one of the uh, big obstacles is, okay, I did this program, what's next? Yeah. Right. Good. Thank you. Okay. So, Javier, what, um, so far, what's been the most difficult obstacle you've encountered um, in your pursuit of an art career, and how did you overcome it? So, um, as um, as you guys mentioned earlier in the presentation, I'm originally from Costa Rica, so I'm an international student. I have a student visa, and I I feel like I should acknowledge all of the international students out there, and if there's anyone watching, uh, because there is a lot of obstacles that come just with that. There's a lot of restrictions of what you can and cannot do, and um, you know, a, a lot of it might not directly relate to your art, art practice, uh, but at the same time, it's it kind of it's kind of like a domino effect, right? At some point, it kind of uh, catches you. So, um, I think that the just just that alone has been has presented a lot of obstacles for me. Uh, you know, some at at some point. Um, uh, some of my uh, classmates were looking for internships and uh, I either wasn't able to or had to do extra things to be able to get there. Uh, and even now, thinking into the future, uh, once I graduate in May, you know, looking for a job, I kind of feels like I'm always having to be two steps ahead. Uh, to to find those same opportunities as everyone else as an international student so um i think um the ways that i've overcome that or tried to has been just be really proactive and looking for opportunities and really be ready for when those opportunities present uh you know themselves um so far i think that that's helped me get where i'm at and uh i think i feel optimistic about you know that i'll be able to keep doing that uh but just I, f I feel like being really ready and to just make that move once it presents itself has been real helpful for me that's wonderful thank you um okay so once again um what is that most difficult obstacle that you've encountered carlos and how did you overcome that well, I'm going to, I'm going to mention two, uh, if, if, if I may, uh, one was, you know, I've always very, I was always very self-conscious that I was never smart enough or talented enough, like my peers or fellow artists, mainly because I don't think I really grew up having anyone that had ever gone to college in my family. I'm the first generation, first to ever do this. And so I had all this weight on my shoulders about, you know, succeeding and, and doing well. And so that was always very stressful. Um, but luckily, you know, my, my parents are very hardworking people and they instilled a very strong work ethic in me. And so, you know, they built up my courage. And even to this day as an adult, as a working artist and professor, I still have that th those fears every once in a while. So I have to, you know, come back to this, you know, remember where I came from and what I've accomplished. And so that's been kind of difficult. So it's just always 
remaining true to myself and where I come from. And then the other one is that, you know, being an artist and working in the art world can be kind of unstable. And, you know, there's no guarantees and there's no constants within this area. Um, so when I was in graduate school, uh, I had a professor that told me that, you know, some people get lucky in the art world, but for, for a lot of people, luck means being prepared when an opportunity arises. And so I've always been prepared or I, I try to be. So if someone offers me uh, an opportunity to be in an, in an exhibition, I have work ready. If someone wants me to paint a mural, uh, I say yes. Um, if someone wants me to help in a community project, I try to be available. So I try to make, I try to stay active because you don't know what these opportunities are gonna lead to. And you may not know if that might be your last opportunity. So, um, but I like to look at it as just building up to the next thing. And if not, at least, you know, I didn't say no and I got something out of it. So always being prepared is what I, what I, I would advise. Good, that's great, thank you. Patricia, same thing. What, um, what was the most difficult obstacle you encountered and how'd you overcome it? Um, I'm going to say that I was my own worst obstacle. <laughs> um, you, you know, it's like you have to empower yourself. Um, most artists are very introverted, shy. They've got a lot of insecurities. And so you really have to fight through that first. Um, you have to realize that these things that are set in place, like you think the galleries are going to do this for me, but really wow. it needs to come from you. And like the more that you can do for yourself, I think the better off that you're going to be. Okay. Um, I think the biggest obstacle, aside from myself, was um, just figuring out the path. I mean, it's like, there's no line, there's no map, uh, it zigzags, and there's so many ways you can go. So really just focusing, figuring out the path, and like the other artist said, you know, being prepared is the biggest thing. If a gallery sends you an email and says, hey, can you be in a show, and you don't have the work, that's an opportunity that you, that you just lost. So the the quote, be ready so you don't have to get ready is like very important. That's great. Great. Bra I love brass tax advice. <laughs> um, okay, good. So this next question came out of my own um, experience when I was in college. I had a very good friend of mine who um, wanted to be an artist and she came from a very traditional things you can be an accountant or you can be a doctor and um right now she is dr blank um she would much rather be having this conversation with us than than what she ended up doing so i want to know what you guys would say to the student who come from families that place um importance on those traditionally lucrative careers um, you know, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a, a banker, um, or those students who fear pursuing the arts be not as stable, quote unquote, as, as other work. What advice would you give those students? Um, I'm afraid to do it, or my family wants me to be a doctor. And Javier, I'm going to start with you, because you're still in the middle of it. Yeah, <laughs> <You're> I am. <laughs> I think and that, also, um, Javier, I want you to know we do have international students. And so th awesome. for, thank you for, for talking from that perspective. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, I So many times I found myself at 2 a.m. Uh, doing homework for the next day, many, many times, many weekends. I've not done anything other than, uh, you know, just full on do home uh, homework. And so I think that the the one thing that's gotten me through those times, even though it's been really, you know, it's, it's tough and it's tiring, has been the fact that I know and I feel really uh, passionate about what I do. And so uh, and, and and about my my decision about person and uh, design career. And so I think that as cliche as it sounds in those situations where your family is not supportive or you might be scared of what the future would hold for you as an artist or designer, um, I think that if you feel like 
if you know that that's your passion, I don't think that um, uh, anything it's going to be or, or it's going to hold you back. You know, like in those moments where I was frustrated and tired at 2 a.m. in the morning, the fact that I'm doing something that I love, it's what keeps me going. You know, I wouldn't imagine me being able being uh, or doing uh, some, I don't know, business uh you know, homework, nothing wrong with business people, but that's just not what I'm passionate about. So um, I, I think that just you understanding that if that's your passion, um, you should pursue that because at the end of the day, you're the, you know, it's your life and you're the one who's going to be doing that for the rest of your life. That's right. Thank you. Carlos, what about you? What advice might you have or any any sort of different take on the students who are afraid either because of their families or themselves to pursue art? Um, you know, that that's a very good question. And, and, you know, again, being first generation first in, in my family to go to college, uh, that was a tough one. Uh, when I was in community college and my first two years of college, I focused on maybe being a business major. At one point, I, I was thinking about going into pharmacy school as well. Um, but then, you know, I, Patricia said earlier, you know, you get one chance at this life and one day it all just kind of clicked. And I knew that being an artist was what I really wanted to do. Uh, now, I didn't know how difficult it was going to be, uh, but uh, I've been very fortunate that, you know, as a professor, I get to work in the arts. As a working artist, I get to make artwork uh, for this art uh, world. And so I have no regrets. I, I, it's been very rewarding. Um, and I know financially, it, it, you know, I could probably make more money doing something else, but, you know, I, I'm very happy with what I've accomplished. You know, my work has been exhibited, it's been published, but, you know, the biggest accomplishment, there's two. As an educator, I've had many students move on to other graduate programs. I've had students, you know, become artists. I've had students become educators, and now they're continuing that tradition of inspiring young artists or young students to pursue their passion. Uh, the other is that, you know, I have my wife and my kids that I can inspire to also do what they want to do with their lives and, and, and not feel guilty about it. So, um, really, you, I tell all my students, you, you have to deal with your own choices, not your parents. And, you know, I know that's, that's tough to say sometimes, but, you know, I, I've enjoyed every moment of being an artist with all its struggles that it entails. It's, I have no regrets. Thank you. That's Patricia, what about you? Do you have any words of advice for those students who who are afraid to pursue their, their passions? Um, jump into the fire. That's my advice. Um, like I grew up in a very poor family, but luckily they were very um, supportive of the arts. Like my dad was a guitar player, but a mechanic also. So his his whole life was hard work, toil and, you know, struggle. And um, I didn't really have any big lofty goals of making it in the art world or being rich or any of that stuff. But I just knew that, uh, you know, nurturing your spirit and expression for me was the big thing. And um, so you do have to just, you know, listen to the voice inside you because that's going to guide you your whole life. And like, like they said, you know, you only get one life. This is your life, yours. So. Um, don't let anyone sway you from your path if that's your path. And like, you will know, like I said, my, my heart hurt at work. I couldn't go in one more day and do the nine to five drudgery and not produce something. You're, you're able to put these positive things in the world that other people are like, wow, you know, you create wonder and imagination and hope and a positive change. You know, it's like you're affecting other people. That's really important. So, um. Uh, yeah, we're just, you have to, you know, just be brave. That's my, <laughs> that's my advice. Be brave and don't listen to, don't listen to others. Follow, follow your dreams. That's great. Okay. And Francisco, what, what about you? Do you have any other, um, any other bend on that question? Um, what, you know, what would you tell students who are afraid? Um, it's, it's okay to be afraid. I mean, that's that's a really crazy uh, thing to think about. It's, it's like this, the decision, it's like, you're going to do this 
for the rest of your life. Um, it, it's it's crazy and it's scary and but uh, I don't know um, if if it helps. Um, I do it by purpose. You know, like like what's the purpose? What, why why do I want to do this? And it's that's what helped me. And and like the rest of the artists said, uh, it's you live with your choices, like with your decisions. I mean, it could have been good, it could have been bad, but no, it's it's what's yeah, like you make a choice and you live with it, um, but was it worth it? So, and for me, it's purpose. Purpose is the thing that guides it. That's great. Yeah, could have gone, it could have gone well, could have gone just horribly, but at the same time, that's yours. <laughs> that's your choice. Um, at the end of the day, so good. All right, so we all know 2020. We've seen all the me the memes about this year um, and everything that's been going on in light of um, the the pandemic, as well as the political climate, as well as protests and everything else going on. Um, what what can you say about the role of the arts? at this moment in time what word of encouragement do you have what what can you highlight about the need for the arts right now and patricia i'm going to start with you on this question well as artists we are creators and with so much loss devastation and you know just just misery like you really have a special power, like you're a wizard, you know, you can put these magical, wonderful, good feelings back into the world. Um, so I think, yeah, just being able to affect people in a positive way that's so needed right now. Um, you're giving hope, you know, and, and to the youth who are into the arts, you're giving hope, you know, um, just creating where there's destruction is like, that's just magical. I just, I mean, I think what we do is magical. I mean, a banker, he, what's he gonna do? Like he's, no one's going, ooh, wow, thanks for my money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he gives us money and that's magical. But, um, you know, it's like, we have special powers. We're wizards, you yeah, know, we're wizards. <laughs> I love that. Every banker out there is like, what? What, Lots what did I do? <laughs> Um, okay, Francisco, what word of encouragement do you have in, in light of um, where we are in 2020? Um, find nice things in the ugly things. Like uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of this and that, black and white, but there's, there's also like, where, where do those things la live? And they live in the gray space. And that's where it, like a lot of things can happen. So you, you can reframe the good and you can reframe the bad and, and transform it into anything. But like, that's where, well, that's, that's where we live. It was just like, how, how do you look at this from a different perspective and, and, and how do you change it into something that's useful or better or helpful or just different? But I would say, yeah, live in those weird spaces and, and it doesn't have to be how somebody says it. There's, there's space for, yeah that's great yeah absolutely and there's there's out of out of a situation that seems ugly there can always be beauty um brought forth or recognized in it if nothing else javier what about you um what what can you say about the importance of art right now i'm i think that it's really powerful because it can bring healing to us i mean um uh, besides of everything that's happened that has happened and it's happening right now here you know we have our personal lives that might be also uh just you know very very difficult times so i think that uh the power of what we do is that it can bring healing in a certain way and it can uh, connect to people it to you know we do it I, I think that i've done it myself for my own personal healing uh but also i think it can it has the power to help other people heal um yeah okay oh sorry okay great and um carlos i'm gonna let you uh finish and t tell us what uh, encouragement you have about 2020 right now <laughs> <laughs> 
But I, I think as artists, you know, we are, you know, we document, we are preserving history through our artwork, you know, whether it's good or bad. And so I think right now we're seeing the voice of the youth just really sound a lot louder than I think I've ever heard it. And so right now we have the strength and the power to document and make artwork of this so that our youth can remember and so that we can remember and so that we can educate for those in the future. You know, I hope that, you know, we may not, ex I hope we don't experience a year like 2020 for a long time, but, you know, I, I really don't know what's going to happen. Um, but I, I would encourage all my fellow artists to document and, and make work about this time because it's, it's a very interesting time. And, you know, like Patricia said, we're wizards. We're making, you know, positives out of negatives, but, you know, we need this because again, we document what's going on in our lives and we, we need it for our histor historical purposes as well. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so you guys know that uh, we, we oh. Hi hey everybody, it looks like we may So can everyone hear me? Okay, you guys yeah, can please. unmute yourselves. We have close to maybe 10 more minutes and um, I don't want to get too far into a question of Angie signs on. It looks like she's making it, but um, what I'd like to ask is if you guys might have a question of each other. Is there something that you guys would like to ask one another about your practice or about your education in the arts? Or we can ignore my question and go to the chat. I have a question for the artists in general. Are they having another job aside from art? Like, because I'm having to do that right now during the pandemic. Um, so I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll answer that. I have a weird job where I am captioning other people's conversation with each other like one-sided but it's for um the hearing impaired um so i i listen to one side of the conversation and i type what i hear and then the other person reads what i'm typing so that's cool it's weird but it, it's for money it's it's mind-numbing and it's not anything i would like uh recommend anyone doing but it's yeah. But it's helpful. It's helpful to someone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm still a student, right? So, um, and the the one job that I've had for the last two and a half years is the one that I've been fortunate enough to keep. So, um, I guess that's my take on it. <laughs> yeah. So there are a couple of questions in the chat. Um, let's take one from, is it Mitchell? What do you do as an artist when you hit a roadblock? Such as working on a piece that you're happy with or maybe multiple pieces you're not happy with. How do you keep yourself motivated and moving forward? I think for me has been taking a step back and uh, not look at it for a while and 
because I think at least this happens to me all the time. The more that I work on something and look at it, uh, then you get to a point where you kind of hate it for a second. So uh, just taking a step back and a break from it is usually helpful for me. Same, taking a break. Taking a break is very important. <laughs> you just get to uh, take a break and reframe and some things will usually just, you know, come to fruition for me at least, you know. And I guess taking a break looks different for each one of you too, probably what that break looks like. Mm -hmm. Carlos or Francisco? No, I, I would say like work on multiple things at the same time. So like if one doesn't work, then maybe another one. And if that doesn't work, you still have like how many five more tries. So I don't know, maybe. Uh, for me, you know, I, I like to um, be creative in other ways. So, you know, either I'll, I'll focus on photography, painting's not cutting it. Uh, I'll focus on printmaking if that's not working. So I just find other creative outlets to take a break from the work that's not working well for me. Uh, and then if I need to take a break from being creative, I just do regular normal things around the house, like cut my grass or mop the floor or, you know, take a walk outside the park and, you know, just do things that give me a break from everything completely. Um, but, you know, for the most part, you know, I like to stay creative. So I just find different avenues um, to stay creative and maybe take a break from one way of working to focus on another. That makes sense. We each kind of focused on taking a break, but the breaks do look different. Like what you do, we have to individualize that. Uh, do you have, well, Angie's back. I'm back. Sorry, my computer decided it was going to refresh right now. Thank you very much, Adele. <laughs> did um did you guys get a chance to answer um about you know about what you learned and carried from Dallas College? Did I get that question out before it crashed? No. Okay, so um what did you learn at Brickhaven or Mountain View, wherever you went, that you're that you still carry with you today? Um, anything, anything from a professor or a fellow student, um, a classmate, any. And Carlos, I'll start with you. Um, I, I think one thing that I remember from being in community college at Mountain View um, was not necessarily anything specific from a professor, but, you know, just researching what your next step is. I think that's what community college may be for a lot of students is a transitional time. You know, are we trying to transition or move to a larger university or are we just trying to figure things out at the moment? And so it's a good time for you to think and research what your next move is going to be. And for me, while I was in community college, it was also a way for me to learn how to balance life, whether it was going to school, uh, working after school, uh, helping my parents with whatever they needed, um, and just trying to figure out how do I balance all these things. And luckily, community college gives you that opportunity to not just to to focus on many things, and it it, it gives you the the luxury to not have to travel really far to attend school, but still get a good education. Um, so really, what I learned in community college was take advantage of what I have here close to home, and how do I balance that out so that I'm ready to go when it's time for the next step. That's great. And I think that's something we all experience in community college, balance, juggling the schedule and work and family and everything else. Patricia, what about you? Is there something that you learned that you carry with you today? Um, a lot of it was what Carlos Don Juan said, balancing life and your art. Um, I actually worked at Mountain View College while I was going to school there and I was working at the Dallas Museum of Art and never had time to do my laundry. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just learning how to balance everything. And um, I came from arts magnet. So a lot of my instructors felt like I had already 
I'd already done some of the stuff that they were teaching and they just kind of let me fly free. So I kind of had just time to play, experiment, and I think that's very important in art. Um, you think that you always have to do an assignment, you know, the way the teacher wants it, but actually just being in yourself and being able to explore your own style. I mean, really creating your own signature style is what's going to get you noticed among every other artist out there. So finding your voice, that was a very important time for me to just you know, explore and play. And I think that's very important in, in our work. That's great. Um, what about you, Francis? College. Um, uh, the, I, well, it was mostly like taking breaks in between classes. Uh, I think that was, I think that's where I learned how to talk to people and uh, how to build a community sort of uh, exchange. Uh, I, I mean, maybe this, you can learn this anywhere, but it was, it was during the, uh, my years at, at, at community college where I was able to talk to people uh, about art and about different things. And, and, and I, I still try to do the same thing, or at least I try to do the same thing everywhere I went. Um, and that served as the model of like community, uh, like, how do you, how do you, uh, okay, I'm going to go to this new place. Um, I'm going to need some people. I'm going to need some friends. I, and, and this is where I learned that. Yeah. I love it. We put the community in college. <laughs> All right, Javier, what did you, uh, what are you still using that you, you learned here? So I think for me has been, uh, I, lo I learned to make connections. Uh, I was really involved in community college. I was in Phi Theta Kappa. I was in a student government association, student uh, orientation leader, and um, none of those things are, are are related. But I think that that has uh, had a big impact in, or it had a big impact when I transferred, and um, being involved also in, in establish connections with your professors. I wouldn't be doing this panel without having that close connect, uh, you know, relationship with my uh, art professor, Brett Dyer. So um, I think just making a lot of connections uh, and networking has been one of the biggest lessons uh, things that I learned during community college. That's wonderful. Thank you, artists. I'm gonna turn it over now to Fabiola and she's gonna wrap everything up for us. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. We really appreciate your part participation um, here with us. Thank you, panelists. We really appreciate all your words and um, you, your insight for all of us um, that are alumni that are in community college right now. Um, and to continue the conversation about the arts, please join our colleagues and study the arts tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, please find the link in the chat. Uh, to register for it. Um, and then if you guys would like more information about the artists that participated, um, please make sure to take a screenshot of the next page to find the uh, artists websites, um, social media pages, and want to find out more information about them. So thank you so much guys for, for being here with us tonight and your, your uh, questions and everything. Thank you again. Bye. <laughs>